Acetaminophen and ibuprofen are two of the most commonly used medicines in the world. They are available over the counter in most countries and are available in combination with other medications. Though they are very useful for the treatment of occasional pain and fever, their long-term use can lead to severe adverse effects, particularly in the kidney and liver. In this video, we will discuss how this occurs and what to look for if this does happen. The information presented in this video should not be used for diagnosing or treating a health problem. Consult your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health plan. Remember to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of more pharmacy and medicine related videos. Let's first briefly talk about what are acetaminophen and ibuprofen. First, acetaminophen, which is a trade named Tylenol in many countries, is an analgesic, which means it's a pain reliever. It's a type of drug that reduces pain signals within your nervous system. It's typically used to treat pain like headaches, joint pain, and toothaches, and to reduce fever. When you take acetaminophen, the drug is processed through the liver. You can find uh, acetaminophen in tablet, capsule, or liquid form. Uh, outside of the US, acetam acetaminophen is known as paracetamol. Ibuprofen, uh, commonly common trade names include Advil and Motrin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, also known as an NSAID. This type of drug blocks your body's production of prostaglandins that cause inflammation. It's typically used to treat back pain, earaches, menstrual cramps, and toothaches, and uh, as well to uh, reduce fevers. When you take ibuprofen, the drug is processed through your kidneys. You can find ibuprofen in tablet, capsule, liquid, or even rectal suppositories. Some of the common side effects of acetaminophen include agitation, constipation, headaches, insomnia, and itchy skin. For ibuprofen, some of the more common side effects include stomach pain, heartburn, nausea, vomiting, gas, constipation, and diarrhea. These are some of the less severe side effects, uh, but more common. Now let's talk about the more serious side effects that acetaminophen or ibuprofen can cause. Uh, as mentioned before, they are both common over-the-counter pain relievers and fever reducers, but they can have serious side effects, especially if taken in excess or in combination with other substances. Firstly, acetaminophen can cause liver damage if taken in doses higher than recommended or with alcohol. Symptoms include nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, yellowing of the skin or eyes, and dark urine. Ibuprofen can cause gastrointestinal bleeding and stomach ulcers if taken in doses higher than the recommended dose or with uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or blood thinners. Symptoms of GI bleeding include black or bloody stools, vomiting of blood, and abdominal pain. Ibuprofen can also cause kidney damage with long-term or excessive use. Symptoms of kidney damage include nausea, stomach ulcers, seizures, and reduced urine output. Both acetaminophen and ibuprofen can cause allergic reactions in some people, which can be life-threatening. Symptoms of allergic reactions include rash, hives, swelling, hoarseness, difficulty breathing, or swallowing, and chest pain. Both acetaminophen and ibuprofen can interact with other medications, supplements, or herbal products, which can increase the risk of toxicity or reduce the effectiveness of the drugs. It is important to check with your doctor or pharmacist before taking acetaminophen or ibuprofen with any other products. Now let's talk about acetaminophen and liver damage in more detail. Two pathways process the vast majority of acetaminophen. The byproducts produced by these pathways are safely passed in the urine. This is identified by number one and number three in this diagram on the left side. The problem pathway, which is the pathway identified by number two, going to number four and number five. A small amount of acetaminophen is processed by a pathway known as the P450 pathway. As this pathway processes the drug, it produces a potentially toxic substance 
called NAPQI, which stands for N-acetyl-P-benzoquinone amine. If allowed to build up, NAPQI can destroy liver cells. When a person takes the recommended dose of acetaminophen, glutathione, an antioxidant produced in the liver, neutralizes the NAPQI, keeping the liver safe. But when a person takes too much of acetaminophen, more NAPQI is produced than what the liver can neutralize. NAPQI builds up to dangerous levels. Then. In liver cells, NAPQI obstructs vital functions and the cells die. <clears throat> acetaminophen overdose is the most common cause of acute liver failure in the United States. Taking too much acetaminophen can cause acute liver injury and even death from acute liver failure. It is possible to experience acute liver failure even if you have no prior liver disease. Symptoms of acute liver failure may include fatigue, diarrhea, appetite loss, discomfort on your right side, below your ribs, and nausea. As it progresses, you may feel sleepy or confused. You may also develop a swollen belly from fluid buildup and may bruise or bleed easily. The progression of acetaminophen toxicity consists of four phases, as described on the right side of this slide. <clears throat> the symptoms uh, generally occur in the first or second phase. Most people receive treatment before liver failure progresses further than this. About three to five days after someone takes too much acetaminophen, the third phase can begin. This phase can include symptoms like nausea, vomiting, fatigue, jaundice, uh, central nervous system, <clears throat> system symptoms such as confusion, sleepiness, and coma. In this phase, death can occur as a result of swelling of the brain, sepsis, and organ failure. According to some research from 2009, Severe and untreated acetaminophen overdose, including unintentional overdose, can cause death within 4 to 18 days. The last phase, if the patient survives, the third phase is survival and recovery. Research from 2009 estimates that 70% of people will enter this phase and fully recover. Now let's talk about ibuprofen and kidney damage. Ibuprofen and other NSAIDs block a process in the body called the cyclooxygenase pathway or the COX pathway. The COX pathway is involved in making prostaglandins, which are hormone-like chemicals that cause inflammation, pain, and fever. But it also it's also involved in helping blood to flow to the kidneys. Blocking the COX pathway can narrow blood vessels, leading to the kidneys. If this happens, then less oxygen reaches the kidneys. People with kidney disease might suffer acute kidney failure when using this non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. The link between ibuprofen and kidney disease might also be diagnosed as analgesic nephropathy, a condition that might occur with long-term use of ibuprofen or other NSAID medications. Ibuprofen can cause kidney damage by inflaming the spaces between the kidney tubules, blocking an enzyme, blocking COX, or making the body more uh, acidic. The risk of kidney damage is higher with long-term, habitual, or excessive use of ibuprofen, especially if you already have kidney-related disease. Kidney damage can be acute or chronic and may lead to kidney failure or nephropathy. Some symptoms of kidney failure are nausea, stomach ulcers, seizures, and reduced urine output. Ibuprofen can cause a number of different kidney diseases, including nephrotic syndrome, allergic interstitial nephritis, papillary necrosis, acute kidney injury, uh, and uh, chronic interstitial nephri nephritis. Ibuprofen overdose can cause sudden kidney failure and seizures. By blocking COX, ibuprofen can interfere uh, with the blood flow to the kidneys, uh, leading to kidney damage over time. Uh, At-risk patients uh, for, for this uh, um, adverse effect include those patients that have pre-existing heart failure, liver failure, uh, volume depletion, or dehydrated patients, and also patients that have hypertension, diabetes, amongst other things.
acetaminophen is not known to affect kidney function when taken in the recommended dosage, the way other pain medicines can. For this reason, it is the drug that healthcare providers often recommend for occasional use in patients with kidney disease. However, if you have kidney disease, you should still talk to your healthcare provider before taking any new medicine. It is important for you to know that any drug can be harmful if you exceed labeled doses or use it longer than directed by the label. Ibuprofen and other NSAIDs rarely affect the liver. It is estimated that between 1 in 10 out of every 100,000 people experience liver damage with NSAIDs. For most people, NSAIDs available today pose little risk for little liver damage. Liver problems with NSAIDs have a higher likelihood of happening to people who already have a higher risk for experiencing liver damage. For example, they have a history of liver problems like hepatitis C. There's also a greater risk if you're taking other medications that are tough on the liver. Ibuprofen can cause changes on liver function tests. Uh, those are your liver uh, enzymes, uh, blood tests that show how well your liver is working. But this typically only happens when people are taking high doses of the uh, NSAIDs. If a, do if a person stops taking ibuprofen, these blood tests should return to normal. But if you have existing liver problems, these changes could be more worries. Finally, some general advice for use of acetaminophen or ibuprofen. To avoid the toxic effects of acetaminophen and ibuprofen, you should follow the directions on the label and the advice of your doctor or pharmacist. Do not take more than the recommended dose or for longer than the recommended duration. Do not take both drugs at the same time, but alternate them between every four to six hours if needed. Do not drink alcohol or use other products that contain acetaminophen or ibuprofen while taking these drugs. If you have any medical conditions or allergies, or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, consult with your doctor before taking either medication. If you experience any signs of toxicity or overdose, seek medical attention immediately. I hope you found this video educational and useful. Please remember to like and share. Thank you.